Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 33 for the 5% series. Let's get straight into it. We start by looking how the players in the system did for last game week, which was Game Week 32. So Pickford 8, Raya 6 and Vicario 4, that's nice for the expensive keepers. For the cheaper keepers, Dubravka got 9, which was nice, Neto 4. For the expensive defenders, Poro 11, the three Arsenal boys all returned. For the cheaper defenders, Branth 8, 6, 8, Nori 4, but then he went off injured. For the expensive midfielders, Saka 10, Fernandez 9, Salah 8, Luis Diaz 7, Sun 5, so that wasn't too bad. The cheaper midfielders, Havertz 14, and now other people are talking about him. <laughs> we were there first, though, weren't we? Palmer 5. For the expensive forwards, Watkins 13, a lot of people dumped him. Haaland 8, uh, Darwin 5. For the cheaper forwards, they did nothing. So for the coming game week, game week 33, we've got a double in 34, but 33, everyone is just playing as normal. Starting with the goalkeepers, Vicario's the most expensive in the system at 5.3. He's away to Newcastle this week, so probably not a clean sheet. Then he's not playing, so definitely no points there. But after that, he's got two doubles in the remaining few game weeks. So if you've got him, he's worth having. If you've not got him, definitely don't buy him this week. Ray is the best keeper in the system, but if you buy him, you only get two Arsenal outfield players. If you've got him, great. If you want to get a keeper because you want to make a change, you can get him. Just be aware it limits your Arsenal options. Onana's okay, and he's got a double in 37. Leno's all right, but no doubles. Pickford's got a double next game week, but away to Chelsea this game week. So lots of chances to save goals and get some points there, but probably not a clean sheet. For the cheaper keepers, Neto's all right. He's got a double next week. Petrovic's okay, but there's a chance he's going to get dropped before the end of the season. If he doesn't, then he's very good, but we won't know whether or not he's going to get dropped. So Dubravka's sellable soon. It now looks like Pope's going to be back in the next two or three game weeks. And when that happens, Dubravka will get dropped. Dubravka doubles in game week 37, but he may not make it to game week 37. But for now, he's fine to have. I'd say don't buy him, but if you've got him, he's fine to keep for now. Ariola's injured and we don't at time of recording know when he's going to be back fit. So you don't need to sell him, but if his injury ends up being long term, you're going to want to move him on. And Kelleher is going to get dropped soon because Allison is going to be back very soon. Home to Crystal Palace this week. Presumably he's going to be playing in that. If you have Kelleher and Ariola, I'd suggest you possibly do want to make a goalkeeper change this week because there's a chance you won't have any keeper. Virgil van Dijk is a good player to buy. He's at home to Crystal Palace this week. Then he's got a double next game week. But after that, nothing special and you may rather have somebody else. But for now, he's good. Trippier is currently injured, so I've not made him green. But if he's back in a couple of game weeks, he's probably going to be a good player to have. So I've introduced Robertson, same side as Virgil van Dijk, Liverpool defender. Virgil van Dijk's pretty much guaranteed 90 minutes every game week. So he's going to get you six points when he there's a clean sheet. Occasionally he'll get an attacking return. Robertson for minutes is a lot more dodgy. He may get 20 minutes, he may get 90 there's a chance that he'll only be on the pitch for fewer than 60 minutes. So if Liverpool keep a clean sheet, he doesn't get the uh, clean sheet points. But he's got much more chance of attacking return than Virgil van Dijk. So if Virgil van Dijk is the safe Liverpool option. Robertson has the higher ceiling if things go well. But he may break your heart. if they In the next three game weeks, they could get three clean sheets and he doesn't get any of the clean sheet points. On the other hand, he might get all three and some attacking returns. So if you're a bit of a gambler, you might want to go for Robertson, but Virgil van Dijk's the safe one. Arsenal, home to Villa this week, and then double game week next week. So the Saliba, White and Gabriel, they're all good buys. Pedro Porro's away to Newcastle this week, then he blanks. I don't think you should be buying Porro. If you've got him, you can keep him, that's fine. But I wouldn't buy him this game week. Chilwell still flagged at time recording I believe so I wouldn't buy him yet but it may be in a couple of game weeks he's going to be worth having for the cheaper defenders Udogi's not worth buying this game week away to Newcastle then he's not playing at all but after that he's a nice cheap defender that might be worth having Aiton Nori's currently flagged if it looks likely he's playing 
then he is worth having definitely for next game week. But you don't need to buy him now. If you've got him, he's definitely worth keeping for now. So Bradley, we always knew he was going to get dropped when Trent was back. Trent's going to be back very soon. I'm recording this before Liverpool play in Europe. I don't know what the lineups are going to be. I've got Bradley and I'm currently assuming this coming game week's probably the last game week he's got a chance of starting. But he may not even start that. If you've got Bradley, he's fine to keep and he's fine to play. But he may not be playing both games next double game week. So one to watch there. Don't buy Bradley. Branthwaite's nice and cheap and they've got a double next game week. Gusto may be injured, probably not. We need to see what happens there. Regarding the midfielders, Salah is a very good midfielder to have. Home to Palace this week. Nice double coming up. He could get attacking returns between now and the end of the season every game week. Son, although he's got a nice fixture this game week, away to Newcastle. Newcastle do have trouble defending, but he blanks next game week. So there are a lot of managers that are currently selling Son to get, for example, Salah or another midfielder who's got two good game weeks. But in game week 35, Sun is worth having. So if you've got him, he's absolutely fine to keep. If you want to switch him out, you can, but the chances are you're going to want him back in a couple of game weeks. Saka's good, got double next game week. Odegaard's good. Foden flagged, but he's good. He doubles in 37. If I didn't have Foden, I wouldn't risk buying him now because there's a chance he won't play this coming weekend. But he doubles in game week 37, so he will be worth getting a bit later on if you don't have him yet. Fernandez, I like him. I'm making him green. He's got Bournemouth, Sheffield United, Burnley Palace. He could get attacking returns every game there. Madison wouldn't buy him now because he's away to Newcastle. Then he blanks. After that, we may want him. Luis Diaz, very good one to buy at the moment. Palace this week, then a double next game week. So if you could choose between Fernandez and Luis Diaz and you had to buy one this game week, you should go for Luis Diaz because he's got three games in the next game, two game weeks, and Fernandez only got two. For the cheaper midfielders, Havertz is a good buy. He's been doing very well recently. Richarlison's not worth getting away to Newcastle, then blanking, but after that, he's got a couple of doubles. Barnes, good buy, uh, but he doubles in 37. He doesn't double yet, so if you're buying a midfielder, I wouldn't be buying Barnes just now. Palmer, you want to have Palmer in your team. Gordon at home to Tottenham. He does very well at home. Then two game weeks time, he's at home to Sheffield United. He's a nice midfielder to have. Rice is nice and cheap and should get some attacking returns, but not as good as the other Arsenal midfielders. garnacho has got some very nice fixtures coming up and he's nice and cheap. As for the forwards, Haaland, he's still not green. He's, apart from in the FA Cup against Luton a few weeks ago where he got five goals, he's not done anything special recently that justifies the expensive price tag if you've got him absolutely keep him for now he's definitely worth playing if you've not got him I don't think he's worth breaking your team over to bring in I've not got him I'm currently not intending to bring him in doesn't mean I won't but currently I'm not intending to not for this game week Watkins after next game week which is at home to Bournemouth he'll be very sellable if you want to sell him now that's fine if you wanted to sell Watkins to get Haaland and you had to make a move somewhere else to afford it, if it didn't cost you a hit, that's okay. Uh, but it's fine to keep hold of Watkins. Isaac at home to Tottenham. In two game weeks time, he's at home to Sheffield United and he doubles in 37. He's a good pick. Darwin's a good pick, especially for the next two game weeks. Solanke, a bit like Haaland in as much as he's not been doing great recently, but he's at home to Man United this game week. Man United do have defensive issues, so he could get something there. And next game week, he's got a double. For the cheaper forwards, Hoyland, I like. He doesn't double next game week, but he does have Sheffield United. He doubles in game week 37. Jackson, he's still on nine yellow cards. If you buy him, you're risking getting a ban when he gets his 10th one, if he gets it the next couple of game weeks. So I wouldn't be buying Jackson now, but if you've got him, he's fine to keep for now if you want to. Kuna's nice and cheap, away to Forest this game week, double next game week. And then he's got Luton, so he's a good choice and he frees up some money. Munez is nice and cheap. Now for the benching order and for the captaincy, I'm going to make suggestions, but you do whatever you like. So this is for the goalkeepers. I'm suggesting the first keeper that I show you that you've got is the one that goes on your bench. So if you've got Pickford away to Chelsea, I suggest he's on your bench. If you've not got him, but you've got Neto, 
home to Man United, it's on your bench. Vicario away to Newcastle. Dubravka at home to Tottenham. Onana away to Bournemouth. Leno away to West Ham. Now I've got Ariola up here at home to Fulham because if he's fit, this is the position I think he should be in, but there's quite a high chance he's not even going to play, so he would naturally be on your bench. But if you had, for example, Ariola and Pickford, I think it's worth starting Ariola just in case he plays. Then we've got Petrovic home to Everton. This is the first real chance of a clean sheet on here. Then Kelleher at home to Palace. And lastly, Raya at home to Aston Villa. Regarding your other players, the first player I show you you've got, I suggest is position three on your bench, the next one position two, and the last one position one. So Branthwaite, if you've got him, I suggest he's position three on your bench. Then we have Chilwell, Richarlison, Madison, Garnacho, Barnes, Udogi, Kuna, Solanke, Munez, Hoyland, Rice, Jackson, Gusto, Aitonori, Porro, Bradley, Odegaard, Fernandez, Robertson, Virgil van Dijk, Trippier. Trippier's almost certainly not playing, but this is where I think he should be. Watkins, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Sun, Havertz, Gordon, Saka, Palmer, Isaac, Darwin, Luis Diaz, Foden, Haaland, and around out of space, so I've not shown Salah. But if you've got Salah, you're playing him. But that same is true for Haaland, Foden, Luis Diaz, Darwin, Isaac, Palmer. If you've got any of those, they'll be playing for you. So hopefully that makes sense. A lot of thought goes into this order, and I'm aware this order will be different to other people's recommendations. This is my suggestions, but if you want to do something different, that's fine. Regarding captaincy, I think there's a fair choice this week, although I'm aware most people are saying it's Haaland or Salah but I think you can go elsewhere. So Haaland is a good choice. But if you have good reason to believe come the weekend he's not starting, you may want to not choose him. But if he does start, he could get a huge score. Salah is also a very good choice for captaincy this week. Now, if Foden's fit and at the moment he's marked yellow and you haven't got Haaland, you can captain Foden instead. If you haven't got Salah, you could choose Darwin instead or even Luis Diaz at a push. Sun's a good choice. Saka's a good choice. And you could switch that for Havertz if you wanted to. Palmer's a good choice. Isaac's a good choice. Of those, Haaland and Salah are the safest choices. Probably Haaland's going to be the most captained, but I could be wrong. But those first two are the safest two. As for the background picture, that's supposed to be a football hitting a spacecraft. Because today's April the 11th, and that's the anniversary of when Apollo 13 took off. And as you may no, that's the one that ran into trouble and didn't actually manage to land on the moon. And you may have seen the film of Tom Hanks in it. It's quite an interesting film, Apollo 13. But that was April the 11th, and today is April the 11th. So there we have it. That's the suggestions for Game Week 33. Hopefully that made sense, and I'll try to respond to any of your comments you leave. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. <laughs>